Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. <clears throat> Today we're going to be making a page inspired by the amazing Megan Wisner Quinlan. Um, this is a page that was inspired after watching um, Megan's IGTV um, demonstration. So if you have um, Instagram, please go and check out Megan's um, page and look in her IGTV. She does lots and lots of videos. Um, there that you can go and check out her amazing style. So I'll leave the link in the description blog below. But I had this page um, finished in my art journal. I did it for a recent class I was teaching. I really liked it, but it needed something. And as soon as I saw Megan's page, I thought, oh, I'm going to try this. Because Megan has this amazing way of just doing these gorgeous little doodles on her page and just making them look so beautiful. And it was lovely to be actually able to see how she created them. So I've started off with doing a little bit of magazine collage. Again, these um, magazine images, I had them, I taught a magazine collage class. So I sort of had this background and I had the magazines hanging around. Um, fashion magazines are a great place to get um, images from. And magazine collage looks really good because you're playing around with um, funny proportions so you want big eyes and little heads or big heads and little eyes and a weird um, pair of sunglasses on them. So the first thing that I did once we painted the stripes and stuck the magazine collage down was to start doing some doodles with a black paint pen and this was the revelation for me. Megan does these amazing doodles on her page but I didn't realize how she kind of started and how crisp and clean she got them and I think it's because she starts off with black, which sounds really odd. Um, but it just gives the white that she puts over top a huge pop of colour. So two themes that she uses a lot in her doodles are leafy themes and those little scallop borders. And you can see just popping them in, just a random amount above and below um, those lines. So I'm going to use the lines to do some journaling in. So I'm just using this to sort of fill up the extra space around it. You can see I'm also drawing over the black um, paint, which seems a little bit redundant, but it just gives me an idea of where I'm going to actually draw over the top of. So I'm using Posca paint pen because that's what I prefer to doodle with. Um, this is the fine Posca paint pen. It's the um, PC1M. It's bullet tip. Um, I would advise against getting you can get a pin tip one which has a metal tip but if you're doing mixed media I find that any paint or a gunk can get caught in the pin tip and makes it stop working so I've, I've never really had an issue with the um, the bullet tip ones. So now I'm going around really really sketchily I'm not taking too much care and drawing over the doodling I've already done and you can just see that just adding that bit of white to it just makes it pop out from the page makes it stand out a little bit and particularly in the close-ups you'll be able to see that really really well um, and just going over all the bits and pieces and then outlining the black lines as well with really scribbly lines so again I'm not taking my time I'm doubling up the lines and this is one thing I found when I'm doodling is the looser you are and the more mistakes for a better word that you make in your line the sketchier and funkier it looks if I tried to draw a really, tried to draw that line without any mistakes in it, I made a tiny little bump, it would stick out. The fact that I'm sort of going over it twice and having the lumps and bumps in it actually makes it look like it was deliberately done like that. So I think it's just a little trick of our eye um, when we do these things. And it often makes me think about how we tell kids to, you know, stay within the lines or colour with the lines or make a straight line, you know. It's an important skill, yes, but is it artistic? Not so sure about that. So it's, it's something I struggle with in class these days and I have to think a few a few minutes before I actually say anything to a kid because I'm sort of like, does, does it need to be straight or can they actually go that way? So you can see I'm um, going in and just adding some extra details to the leaves. And I'm also going in and outlining around my magazine collage. And this is a really important thing that I find to do it helps sort of integrate everything together you can see just by putting the black lines around it just really highlights everything on the page I know it's a bit tricky to see with the um, the glare of the magazine um, and you can 
have lots of fun with your magazine images with adding in extra details like I've put in nice big eyebrows I'm going to put dots in her dress you can put um, extra patterns in if you've got some stencils you can certainly stencil over them in different colors and so on so you can really sort of um, make your magazine collage as your own by adding in some extra details so I'm just using the black and white on this because I had those black and white pens out um, to do that and the reason I love the paint pens is because it's acrylic paint that you're putting on so um, it dries fairly quickly and fairly permanently um, and you don't have too much issues with it. The stencil you can see in the background on the pink page is from Stencil Girl. I um, really loved that word unfinished and that's why I deliberately painted around it. I actually wanted to have that left on the page. I don't know if it necessarily goes with the the entire spread of things but I just really liked having that um, subtle bit in the background. This page in particular this style of working works really really well with um, sort of monochromatic um, backgrounds so at the end I'm going to show you another um, page I did because I was addicted to doing these after I, I started playing with them um, using shades of blue. So I'm going in now with my phone to find some quotes or having an accidental scroll of Instagram as you do while you're busy creating. So one of the things that I like to do is um, any words I have on my page I like to put a shadow around them or a highlight. So that's what I'm doing to the word I'm finished. Just using my white pen to highlight around the edges um, to show the unfinished or pop it out from the background. So to look for quotes, I tend to use Pinterest a lot. So you can see me in my Pinterest um, putting in a quote, uh, looking for a quote. And I use the keyword unfinished. So I look for unfinished quotes um, to, to find this quote that I'm writing on the page. Um, I use um, Pinterest a lot and I use keywords a lot when I'm um, trying to find a quote. I try and crystallize what I'm feeling or what's bothering me or what I want to say um, into one or two words and then use that and put quotes after it to search. Now you could certainly do that on Google as well. Um, I just find in Pinterest that they're usually presented really nicely um, so it gives you some different font samples as well sometimes, um, particularly for um, cursive writing which I'm not brilliant at. Um, so I like having a bit of a um, model there to help me out. So this one I thought fitted in perfectly this page. Unfinished projects are a symbol of progress, not of imperfection. It's time to start something new and trust the magic of a new beginning, which I really loved um, because this was an unfinished project. It was sitting there until I came across Megan's amazing um, artwork to show me what it looked like. So here are the close-ups of the finished page. Um, and how it all balanced together. And here is a sample of the alternative color scheme that I did, which I really loved as well. And that turquoise blue with that silver image was just perfect. I didn't do much to that magazine image in the end, um, which I really love. The other combination I've tried is, instead of using black on the page, I did a teal page and used copper paint, which was amazing as well. So play around with your backgrounds and have fun. And please, please, please check out my description box below to find the links to Megan's page to see her fabulous IGTV um, instructions because she's just amazing. Until next time, bye for now.